So let's see how we would actually allocate some images and buffers. So the first thing we need to do is actually declare the type and format of the uh, image buffer. So in this case, our data type is set to CL float because we're dealing with floating point data. And the channel order has been set to RGBA, so red, green, blue, alpha. So it's a four channel image uh, that we're dealing with. So after we've set our format, we're gonna actually create two 2D image buffers. So we have to, of course, give it a context because your data has to be associated with a context. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pass in the format. So we're telling the allocation routine what's the format of the data. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna tell it the actual size. So in this case, it's image width and image height because we're allocating 2D images. So after we've called it twice, we have two image objects, one called input image and one called output image. So now let's create the other type of memory object, which is called a buffer. So in this case, we're gonna call the CL create buffer call. Again, we're gonna pass in the context because we need, the runtime needs to know what context to associate this memory object with. The next thing we're gonna do is pass in the size of this buffer in bytes. So in this case, we pass in size of float times width times height because we're allocating in bytes and we need to know the bytes. Again, you'll note we don't tell it the format of the data because this is just raw chunks of memory. So we don't need to know whether it's floating point data, integer data, or even a piece of, of a structure. We just need to know the number of bytes to allocate. And after we call it twice, we'll have a buffer for input data and a buffer for output data. So now that we've actually created these memory objects, we actually need to be able to get data into and out of these memory objects. So there are special calls in OpenCL for reading and writing memory object data. But let's say we want to read data from a region and a memory object and actually put it in host memory. So what we're going to use is the CL NQ read buffer command. Uh, one quick note here, we're NQing this into our command queue. So the first thing, the first argument is going to be which queue are we actually doing this NQ operation? The next argument is the actual object we want to do the read from. The third argument is whether this is a blocking call or not. The next argument is the offset into this memory and then the size. There's an equivalent write to a region of memory object from host memory call, and that is conveniently named CL NQ write buffer. And it's gonna take very similar arguments to the read buffer, except that the direction that it moves data is the exact opposite. So whereas read buffer takes data from a memory object and places it in memory, write takes um, memory data from host memory and puts it into a memory object. Another option is, let's say we wanna map a region of memory and a memory object to the host address space. So with that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna NQ map buffer. And so what that allows us to do is directly access the data that would be used in that uh, memory object. So we could actually one by one go through and change the data. Uh, note, this might not be the most efficient way of doing things. It'll depend on the runtime and the particular application that you're writing. You can also copy regions of memory between two memory objects. And you use the CL NQ copy buffer. And so that takes a queue, a source object, a destination object, and two offset parameters. So it's key to note, again, that there is no context passed to this because we can only share data uh, with memory objects that are allocated within the same context. Also, they all operate uh, asynchronously or synchronously depending on whether the blocking call is set to CL true. If you set the blocking equal to CL true, then they operate in a synchronous mode, which means that they will block until the actual memory operation takes place. And this can actually take a fair amount of time to transmit the data depending on where the memory is being copied to and from. Alternatively, if you pass in CL false to that call, it'll be an asynchronous call, and that call will be enqueued into the runtime, and you'll have to use the OpenCL event management system to actually guarantee that the memory has been copied completely before you actually use it. My name is Justin Hensley, and I'm a senior member of technical staff in AMD's Office of the CTO. Thank you for watching this video.